Special thanks to Wizard Academy, who is a proud sponsor of this episode. Welcome, amigos y amigas, to Latinos You Thrive, the podcast that celebrates the vibrant and diverse tapestry of Latino and Latina success stories from all walks of life. I'm your host, Victor Escalante, and I'm thrilled to bring you another story of success. As Latinos, we're a community filled with passion, resilience, and a rich cultural heritage that shapes our experiences and aspirations. In each episode of this podcast, we'll bring you inspiring narrative of individuals who have not only embraced their Latinidad, but have used it as a source of strength to overcome challenges and reach new heights. Our mission is to shed light on the remarkable achievements, stories of triumph, and the unyielding determination of Latinos who have made a significant contributions in various fields, from business and the arts to science and activism. Today, we bring you special guest Yesenia Andablo. Yesi, as she is commonly called, has been in the language industry for over 15 years. Born in Elgin, Texas to Mexican parents, she proudly calls herself Mexican-American and is grateful for having experienced both cultures and having the best of both worlds. Yesi holds a degree from Texas A&M University in International Studies and Spanish and studied abroad in Mexico City at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, UNAM. Former high school Spanish teacher, tutor, and private instructor for college students and working professionals. She has the experience to work with you and take you to the level you need in the target language. So let's get on with it. And now we have Yesenia Andablo. Yesenia, welcome to Latinos Who Thrive. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Victor. Tell us a little bit about your background, uh, Yesenia. Where are you from and where is your family from? So uh, my parents are Mexican immigrants. Um, they they moved to Texas and, and I was born here. I was born actually in Elgin, Texas or Elgin, Texas. Um, I haven't been there in since I was three, so I don't even know if people say Elgin or or Elgin anymore. <laughs> okay. I've heard both. That's near um, Dallas, yeah. isn't it? Um, that's near Austin, actually. Oh, it's near Austin. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I know that whole area has grown, but you yes. haven't been back. I actually went to school in Austin, so yeah. Uh, going back uh, not too long ago, it's uh, it's amazing how everything has grown, grown in that area. Yep. So Yesenia, tell us the through line of starting your business. Uh, yes, to speaking. Well, um, so like I was telling, uh, my background had a lot to do with uh, this uh, passion of mine, which is, you know, yes to speaking and what we do, uh, what we do for, for families. Um, so, um, you know, like I said, my parents were Mexican immigrants and, um, you know, we, I, we moved to Houston when I was a little or three. Um, you know, uh, long story there of how everything happened. My mom struggled a lot as a, you know, uh, there was abuse and everything. So, you know, we moved to Houston, uh, she moved escaping, a, a you know, violent person. And, uh, so she settled here as a single mom and, um, moved with my sister and I to Houston. And, uh, I'm sure it was a struggle for her, such a struggle, to, you know, to, to be able to give us everything, you know, that we needed. Um, and, uh, so we were here and then she met my father, who's the person that I call my father. Right. Um, and you know, she, he, they fell in love, um, took us in as well and then they had three more children so i'm the oldest of five so we're kind of a big family here when, when it comes to to kids and children so growing um, up what was your experience uh with language uh what how did uh, your earliest uh formative years uh, influence the the work that you're doing now yeah so like i said so my, my mom moved to houston uh, you know married my dad and um, they did not know the language. Um, um, I was the oldest of five, like I was saying, and uh, I really had to be the support uh, system for my parents because of the language barrier. Um, I think that uh, if they would have learned English, uh, things would have been very, very different for us. Um, as long as I can remember, I mean, I was translating since I could talk, <laughs> since I remember. Um, I was their translator and the person who kind of help them through every single system here, um, education system, the healthcare, uh, you know, um, everything else, everything else you can think of. And uh, so I saw, I was the product of, let's say, you know, parents who, who missed out on so much uh, opportunities 
to give to their family because of this, uh, the lack of English, right? Um, we believe that, used to speaking, we believe that 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 English empowers you. English empowers you um, for for uh, you know being for being independent, not depending you know on 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 your kids or or the neighbor or you know, um, et cetera. Um, and it gives you you know that opportunity and empowers you, and it definitely gives you uh, the tools for you can succeed in a more of a prof- prof- not only personal but a professional. Um, aspect here in the United States. You definitely so, have to assimilate into the culture. And uh, the only way to assimilate is to be fluent in, in English. Uh, so that's a common challenge for a lot of a lot of immigrants. And and it's great that you are now uh, doing this for, for other immigrants. Uh, do you also teach uh, uh, Spanish to uh, professionals? We do. We uh, we teach Spanish and English. Um, it seems like our our, our our biggest interest, though, has been English. Um, that seems to be our biggest um, uh, audience. But we do offer uh, we do offer Spanish to individuals and to companies. Okay. What has mm-hmm. surprised you the most in the work that you're doing? What has surprised me the most? I think the stories. The stories um, that we hear uh, from our students. Uh, where they are, where they've been, where they want to be. Um, it we see a lot of uh, a lot of hardworking people, a lot of hardworking people that had just they they they've missed out on opportunities because of the language. Uh, and I see them, I see their stories in my story. Uh, like I said, I was not. A lot of people tell me, well, how do you how do you know you know what it was a struggle? You know, you're 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 an American. You were born here. I uh, said, yeah, I'm I, I was the the daughter of two parents who didn't have this opportunity. So I, I do know how it feels. And I can tell you that it's it's a burden, too, on our kids sometimes when we put so much um, so much responsibility on them. How long have you been doing this? Oh, uh, so I've been in this uh, language industry around 15 years Um I, as soon as I left, you know, college, um, I started using the both languages and my experience with translation and, uh, you know, the languages um, to, you know, to, to work part time here and there and, and every single job I did. But uh, around three, almost four years ago, um, I decided that I wanted to do something more and I wanted to create something for for others that came from my experiences and everything that I knew and how to help people. So I have had yes to speaking for uh, over three years, almost four. In that time frame, what is your estimate of the number of people that you've been able to help? Oh, well, oof, uh, it definitely more than what our students have been. Uh, we definitely keep a very active social media uh, where we teach and we educate on different things. Uh, we have uh, had, um, in over the three years, we have had multiple students. I would say Student wise, uh, including with the company, we've had definitely over two hundred students. Oh, probably more. That's a low, uh, low number. Uh, but I think we've reached a lot more. Um, like I said, uh, we reach a lot more on our social media because we educate that via, uh, as well, and uh, we get always really great messages saying, you know, oh, I did not know this, or you know what, hey, I thought about this the other day, or your um, your mini lesson helped me. Uh, at during this uh, time that I went to the supermarket or that I was uh, with a friend or that I needed to ask for help, you know. So uh, it's definitely a lot of people's lives that we touch with uh, what we do. In your experience, why do you think people need to speak English properly as opposed to slang English uh, that people pick up maybe on, on the work site or from friends that don't speak it properly? I wouldn't say... I mean, I have nothing against slang. <laughs> I think uh, I think when you live in the United States, you pick up on things that uh, that you will never do as uh, learning uh, English in another country. And I think it's I think it's important to to recognize what that is, and uh, maybe even have to use it when you find yourself in situations where that's what you're surrounded with. Um, but I do think that uh, proper English has definitely its place in uh, people's lives uh, when it comes to uh, making um, good per- professional connections, getting the right audience. 
that you want your target audience when it comes to to providing ser- uh, products and services. So I I do think that uh, proper English, like I said, has its place and has its importance. But uh, I think both uh, both slang and proper English are are definitely asset uh, for any anybody. I concur. Depends on your audience again, because I teach public speaking. Uh, that's one of the main emphasis is know your audience so that you can connect with them and they can relate to you. And so if you're speaking to an audience or if it's one-on-one or if it's a team, that's the colloquial speak of them. You got to meet them where they are. If you're too proper and all they speak is is slang, then uh, you're not going to be able to fit in. You're going to uh, be out of war with them. Or you even understand sometimes uh, maybe you're not required to, to speak slang, but you're maybe required to, to understand it, to be able to help somebody uh, wherever that is, whether that is through the services you offer or whether that's um, in, on the streets when somebody asks you for an address or, when you know, small talk or whether, you know, it's your volunteer or organization. You know, I, I think understanding um, the English of the area you're in um I think that's it's very important for you to to be able to to help uh, continue living and in in the country in a more effective, efficient way. And like I said, being able to to help and uh, you know be part of the society. Sure. And in your experience, if people develop the confidence to speak English uh, effectively and properly, does that translate into other uh, assimilation? into the culture? Uh, does it uh, build their self-confidence to do other things that maybe they didn't think were possible? Absolutely. And I would say that about a- learning English or anything else that you put your mind to or things that scare you, things that you think that you wouldn't be able to do and you find yourself doing them. I think anything great, any of those, anything you accomplish that's challenging. I mean, Obviously, a language is extremely challenging um, because not only does it require, you know, work, it requires patience, discipline, time, uh, you know, all of that organization, um, all, all of that plays into how you're able to accomplish these things. And like I said, I think all of that gives you the confidence you need to to, to achieve other projects uh, in life. Um, but yeah, you have to be a risk. Or you have to say, you know, you have to give it your all and go for it for so for these things to work out for you. Are your services uh, in person, or do you also offer them uh, virtually? We do both. We uh, we have both. We uh, actually our private classes more in the virtual setting. Uh, we do offer private in person if you're in Houston, but our um. Private classes are more uh, on the virtual setting. Like I said, we we go by packages, and it just seems to be easier for the student. It's easier for them to be able to have that one on one with the teacher uh, around their time uh, in their comfort of their home or their office or wherever they they find themselves during their class. But yeah, we offer both. both. And the in person is same idea. You know, it's the same comfort and and uh, flexibility with your schedule. But you know, sometimes you need a little uh, a little bit of a um, a social connection, right? Uh, and not that you don't have that in virtual because it, it's you, uh, obviously, in front of a camera, right? <laughs> in a computer or phone. But uh, sometimes it's, it, you need that um, connection when it comes to the in-person. And we have both. You're listening to Latinos Who Thrive with special guest Yesenia Andablo. We'll be right back. Are you ready to unlock your full potential and embark on a journey of limitless knowledge and boundless creativity? Look no further than Wizard Academy, where dreams become reality. At Wizard Academy, they are not just a school. They're a community of visionaries, dreamers, and achievers. Whether you're a student, a working professional, or someone looking to reinvent yourself, Wizard Academy has a place for you. I know because I'm a graduate of the World Changers class of 2007 when I worked in print media. Imagine being guided by industry experts where innovation knows no bounds and where your passions are transformed into skills. 
Their cutting edge programs span technology, business, arts, and more. You'll discover the magic within you and you will it with confidence. At Wizard Academy, they embrace diversity and creativity and they celebrate your unique journey. So be sure to join them in the heart of innovation where the extraordinary becomes ordinary. Visit them at www.wizardacademy.org now to explore their lineup of courses, faculty, and the incredible success stories of this community. Your future is waiting. Unleash your inner wizard today. Are you looking to take your career to the next level? Do you want to stand out from the crowd and make a lasting impression? Then look no further. Introducing the ultimate game changer, the Escalante Public Speaking Mastery Course. In today's competitive world, effective communication is the key to success. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, the ability to speak confidently and persuasively is a game changer. I know, because I have lived through it. That's why the Public Speaking Mastery course is here to unlock your full potential. The comprehensive course is designed to transform your public speaking skills from good to extraordinary. I will be guiding you through a step-by-step -step process, helping you overcome stage fright, craft compelling messages, and deliver impactful presentations. When I took the Dale Carnegie School of Public Speaking and Human Relations, it changed my life and I will be able to help you do the same. My career in journalism and training and development was built on having the skills to be able to communicate to a team or thousands. I hold nothing back. I will give you all my trade secrets and how you can thrive and crush it. Imagine walking into a boardroom and captivating your audience with your powerful presence. Picture yourself confidently leading meetings, delivering persuasive pitches, and commanding attention in every interaction. With a public speaking mastery course, you'll be equipped with the skills to excel in any professional situation. If you're ready to take the step and supercharge your career, enroll in the public speaking mastery course today. All the information and the cost is in the show notes. Don't let fear hold you back. Unlock your potential, elevate your career, and become a master of public speaking. Go to the show notes to register today to secure your spot in the next session of Public Speaking Mastery Course. Public Speaking Mastery Course, empowering professionals, transforming careers. Act now and make a lasting impression in every opportunity that comes your way. You will be glad you did and you will thrive for the rest of your life. We now return you to Latinos Who Thrive with special guest Yesenia Andablo. Uh, talk to us about, uh, uh, I saw on my feed uh, one of your announcements that you were offering free classes. Uh, do you work off of grants? Uh, how does that work? What is it that you, you offer for free to the community? Okay, so we have partnered up with, uh, with, um, with the community center uh, in Precinct 2. Uh, uh, for Harris County, Precinct 2 Harris County, uh, and uh, we provide uh, to the community. We, we go and we teach English to the community. Anybody in the community can come for the free classes. We build a partnership with them. Uh, they We give them special discount for the uh, nonprofit uh, when it comes to, you know, our, our dues and everything, what we charge, and we're able to to help the community uh, with their uh, English acquisition, ESL classes. So that's you giving back to the community. Yes. That's, that's great. So what size of class, when people uh, sign up for a class, not uh, individual classes, but for a class, how big are your classes? We usually don't have group classes. We are more on the, uh, well, when it comes to our services, right? We do give group classes for companies, for example, okay. or, you know, people who hire us sure. give uh, Spanish or English for their teams and the size of their teams depends on, on how much of a need they have. But when it comes to yes to speaking, we don't ourselves have uh, group classes. We have a virtual group course that we sometimes offer throughout the year, uh, but that's not really our, 
our, our big um, service. Uh, the group course is virtual and it's a 12 week course, 12 week course. And we offer it once or twice a, a year. And it really depends. I mean, we're talking about a small group course of like 10 people. Uh, okay. We want them to be as active as possible, as active as possible during their 12 week uh, course. It's a pretty intensive course. It's a six hours a week, two hours, Monday, two hours, Wednesday, two hours, Friday. Uh, that's for 12 weeks for a total of 72 hours. And that kind of gives you the A1 level, which is a beginner level uh, of English. Uh, but through every, but year round, we're always um, having, like I said, our private lessons, which is, well, like I said, our main service. We do a very personalized uh, teaching. So we do personalized curriculum uh, for every uh, one of our students. So you take uh, people at every level, even if they don't have an education in Spanish, uh, you can help these people. Well, we are, our, our classes are more centered for Latinos, are more focused on Latinos. We do more English for Spanish speakers, but we are able to take uh, non-Spanish speakers that are wanting to improve their English. We definitely are, but they would have to have an uh, intermediate level to a higher level when it comes to, to English. That way we are able to communicate with them. A, a little more effectively and we can we can still uh, uh, communicate in English and you know a more limited English of course but we're still able to communicate on what their needs are and what they need to work on and reinforce I got you so so mm -hmm. you do an assessment and then you build a curriculum according to their needs that is correct we have an orientation meeting with every one of our students every one of our students we have a, a an orientation meeting between the instructor the student and myself and we're able to kind of gauge um, in those 15 to 20 minutes, you know, what it is that they need, how their English is, what they want to work on, even how they want to work on it. Maybe they want a specific, they have a specific need or a specific ask on how they want their classes. And of course, we do our professional um, recommendations and we kind of tailor it to them depending on what they want, their needs and our experience. What is the thing that surprises you the most? and maybe brings you a lot of satisfaction in the work that you do. So um, earlier you asked me that question about what surprises me the most, and I'm sorry, I actually don't think I even uh, responded it completely, but uh, okay. what, what surprises me the most is, is the, the, brave, the bravery, the discipline, the hard work of a lot of our students. Um, a lot of our students are Hispanic, you know, they come from Latin America, uh, and they just, they're here to add to society. You know, they're here to work. They're here to, to provide for their families. And um, what, I, what I've seen is that when they're able to acquire, even if it's a little bit of English, um, they're able to, to get more information or resources for their family. Um, they're able to, to defend um, their case. They're able to provide for themselves. They're, they're empowered they start having more confidence in how much they can rely on themselves. And, uh, you know, sometimes with no English, I see a lot of these stories of uh, these, uh, uh, our students with stories of, you know, fear that they can't get out of certain relationships because they're afraid of the system because they can't communicate. Uh, moms who are single moms who just can't seem to get a better working job to, to provide more for their kids because, you know, of the language. So I see these great stories of, empowerment in a superación, right? Because they're able to, with the language, do so much more, do, not only for themselves, but for other people. And I love the stories that I hear when they say, you know, hey, I, I, I'm able to ask things now, you know, for my kids. I'm able to talk to the teachers. Uh, I was able to go to a session, you know, and, and be involved, or I could speak to my kids and my son's uh, friends and make a connection. Or my neighbor, like I, I've been wanting to tell my neighbor this and I have just not been able to, but now I can't. Like you hear so many things um, and it's it's amazing. It's it's amazing how you combine the hard work of a lot of our Latinos or Hispanic uh, with uh, English and it's just, man, they're reaching new heights. That is awesome to hear. I bet that is very rewarding for you. Extremely, extremely. What legacy do you want to leave behind? Um, I think I want to leave behind 
the fact that we all have something that we can give and we need to definitely give it. Um, I don't remember the name of the brand or else I give a shout out right now. But uh, I bought a shirt in one of our networking events and the shirt, I fell in love with it. And it says, use your power to empower. And my power is mm, speaking a language and knowing a culture, the American culture, the Mexican culture, but no languages, being bicultural more than just bilingual and using that to tell others and to teach others to be able to, like I said, be more for themselves and be more for their families. So for me, my legacy is that, you know, what you have, your gift, you know, God gives us all gifts. You know, we all have something that we're good at, something that we can give. Um, and I think doing, giving that to our brothers and sisters here, you know, our neighbors, our family, our community, giving that is just everything. I got to ask you this question because I brought this up in my last episode about how Houston is becoming very Latinized uh, with a lot of the the cultural uh, celebrations that we have going on. This week for uh, for Dia de los Muertos or, or, or Halloween, it's like you have Katrinas uh, all over Houston. Uh, people mm -hmm. are dressing up as Katrinas. And we even had a couple of mariachi fest festivals that got a lot of buzz. I mean, that's all I could see on social media was was the mariachi festivals uh, uh, taking place. And, and mm -hmm. since you have uh, grown up around Houston, uh, what's your take about that? Comment, comment about how Houston is becoming Latinized and how does that make you feel? I mean, I love my culture. Like I said, I, I am in love with the Mexican culture. And I actually am very... Um, uh, I wouldn't say I know it all, but I'm very familiarized with a lot of other cultures, being that, you know, I've always networked with uh, uh, Hispanic, Latino entrepreneurs, uh, and I have, I have learned from so many different uh, Venezuelans, Colombians, uh, and so many other, right? So many yeah. others. Um, but um, I, love, I love the fact that people are embracing in Houston uh, this community. I, I, I love that we're we're bringing we're bringing this to um to the united states in this case to houston um i think the fact that we're showing where we come from and having the american right um uh, well say america some people have an issue with that but i mean the person who's here from the united states right because they say we're all we're american <laughs> but in anglo let's use that word in anglo yes. or even um, you know, over so, uh, African Americans or, or Blacks, you know, how, whatever term you, you wish to, to use, um, like our um, be exposed to this. I think it's beautiful. But as much as I love that and as much as I think we should continue doing it for sure and have others know what we have and bringing them to our table, too, I think it's important for us to be able to do the same the other way around. I think it's great that we learn the language. I think it's important for us to know the culture, to be able to know uh, what's important for the community here that's not Latino. And uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's worked both ways. I think that a society that our community society that learns to value each other's traditions, uh, you know, practices, celebrations, I think works very well together. So I love it. Um, and I, will, I want us to do the same the other way around. <laughs> yeah, you bring up a very interesting uh, uh, point about uh, counter-assimilation because uh, I've been to uh, a couple of concerts. One of them was uh, Shakira, and there were a lot of Anglos in, in, the, in that concert because uh, mm -hmm. it's not so much that, that they are uh, loyal Shakira fans, but they're dating or married to Latinos that uh, mm -hmm. that they were there right along assimilating into the music and culture. Yeah, definitely. I, I like I said, I think we're we're a big influence. Uh, and right now, in the future, we will continue being that. We're very we're big in numbers. Um, and you know, sometimes that doesn't sound so good to other people. <laughs> but like I said, I I think when we work together and we we we're open to that, just as we want them to come to us and be able to know us. 
uh, here in a country, you know, that's not ours. Um, well, it is mine. <laughs> I was born here, but, you know, I, I, I always make myself Mexican, completely Mexican. But, um, right. it's, but, you know, that's not ours. And I think it's important that we definitely respect as well um, that we need to know when we need to not only speak the language, but we need to respect uh, many other um, things here. Um, as we are at the end of the day, we are immigrants. We're important. We add to the society. Uh, but yeah, we're also visitors. Look at the the attendance at the rodeo. It's like mm -hmm. I've yeah. never seen so many Latinos dressed up as as cowboys and cowgirls at the rodeo. Yeah. No, absolutely. That that day, I, hey, I think we need more than one day. Come on, Victor, who can make yeah. that happen? <laughs> yeah. lots, lots of uh, lots of uh, melting pot taking place. Yes, you know that's funny that you say that. Um, there's that obviously there's a the melting pot theory, and then you have the salad bowl theory. I, I love the salad bowl theory. I, I think the melting pot um, has obviously the the idea, the connotation of uh, you know we we kind of all blend together and we're good and we lose this and we lose that and what's the melting pot. Now, I think the thought of theory is beautiful. I think we have our own characteristics, our own beauty and our own traditions and culture and we just work together with the other. And uh, I love it. I hadn't, beautiful. I hadn't heard the salad. Uh, 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 salad bowl theory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Any final words, uh, Yesenia? No, well, not. Thank you for having me again. And uh, nothing. I mean, I just like, like I said, um, I were definitely uh, available to to help anybody who wants to improve uh, their English on any level uh, in their Spanish. If they want to open up to a huge market that we are, the Les Latinos, you know, we are a big, big um, target, a uh, big audience, a uh, big community. And um, yeah, so. I mean, we're we're always here to 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 learn from each other, and you know, thank you for having me. Oh, we're a big we market to the tune of yeah, to the tune of fifty fifty four billion dollars in the Houston area alone to be able to yeah. to reach that market. So yeah, for sure, we're gonna have your contact info in the show notes. So be sure to check her out. Thank you for joining us, Yesenia. We look forward to your future success. Thank you so much, Victor, and I do look forward for yours and all of our community. And that's going to do it, my friends. Until next week, go out and thrive.